Katie Bohens, Leanne Brown, Andre Kudrescu, thanks for coming to the Woodward Line. Let's start with our one question interview with Katie. Um, you mentioned Ghost at the start of your reading, and your entire reading was a love letter to a dead person. Can you begin speaking about or tell us about using words uh, written to someone who's not here to talk to people who are here? Um, well, luckily, Alain Badiou is not actually dead. At least I don't think so. Okay. Sorry, um. that's my... Uh, <laughs> I was looking at the French philosopher. But I think you have a really great question. Okay. Um, it is a kind of a challenge to write to someone that you don't know. Okay. Um, and so that's where, you know, in a weird way, I'm writing to his books. Well, let me start that question over again so I don't seem like a complete idiot. <laughs> no, 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 no. no Go no. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Um, I, I mean, I love to talk about it, right? I think that's part of what's interesting about the text is you know, what is the relationship that the audience has with who they're listening to? What is the relationship that the writer has with other books? What's the relationship between author and text, right? Or, I'm sorry, reader and text. And, I mean, I think what's interesting about this is to me what Alain Badiou says about love. He says love is thinking as two. So in a way, any time you give yourself over to a text, you're thinking like that text. It's not necessarily thinking like you, but in a way you fall in love with the text any time you begin to accept its thought. Um, so, I mean, that's the most interesting thing I can think of to say about what I learned during this project. Um, I, I, I often cheat and ask a second question, but I'm just going to make a quick comment and maybe you can reply. Sure. You read sometimes very, very fast. You were piling the words on top of one another. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think that there's a, um, there's a pacing rhythm that you can, uh, you can speed things up or you can slow things down depending on the emphasis that you're looking for. Sometimes when things are too slow, they get a little too dramatic for me, particularly with these, lovers, these letters, because they're so dramatic anyway. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to hit the audience over the head too much. So, Leanne, yes. there's, a lot of humor, there's a lot of humor in both of your works. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, and some, some degree of sarcasm as well. But um, you used a lot of found work. And you used a melody, I think, and then you changed the words. I'm going to cheat and ask you two questions, okay. too, because I found that interesting, using the found work. So if you could talk a little bit about that. And I have to talk about place with you, just not so much in the work, but you're born in Japan, you're raised in North Carolina, you live in New York City. So there must be something going on there in, in terms of your work. So the found work and the place. Well, I'll try to weave this together because um, I think one great thing is that I was born in these foreign countries and I probably heard all these foreign languages around me when I was just you know, first hearing human speech and I, started, I heard the musicality of it. So I was listening all the time. So that found language, I'm always listening for my poems. I just write things down that people say. I frame them as poems. So I think you know, being raised in a foreign language culture, just even though it's just till three years old, you know, did something to my brain. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, it's like, that, that hearing and finding that found text is really important. The musicality of that. And like my first poems that I loved are like lullabies and hymns and that's always been important. I don't know. Um, it's, like, it's like, you know, hearing the, the world as poetry. Like you just decide it's gonna be poetry. You, just, you have, you're open to it, you know? And you're, you have this openness. And I, and I try to spread that with, when I read, I try to say like, you know, Get your favorite song, get your favorite hymn that you love, or your favorite, whatever song it is, and then, and then rewrite that in your head, like carry that around, you know. It's very generative. I just, I like to, I hope that my work lets people hear words as poetry in a new way. Like see signs as a part of a poem, or start to paste things together in a new way. Collage, you know. So Andre, last but certainly not least. So <coughs> you have a love for surrealist stuff. But I find that a lot of your stuff makes a great deal of sense. I mean, the hat poem made a great deal of sense, and I usually think of surrealism as, as breaking through the, the, the sensical piece. Can you speak a little bit about that? Well, I'm not a surrealist. 
Okay. And uh, I never quite knew what that was, and when I did, I didn't want to practice it. So I think of all of that as pure realism, and it is something worse even. Uh, it's sort of a hypercritical realism, if you like. The hat thing, for instance, yeah, it made it, it was, was definitely hyper real. Yeah. 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 I'd just like to talk about the end of one of your poems, the poem that you sent to us to put online. Um, there's a litany of really bad things that happen in it. And then at the end, um, you talk about, well, the, the whole thing is talking about the bridge. And it ends with the, with the parentheses. Um, and after this litany of bad things and the bridge that's sort of the center of the piece is destroyed, um, you said the parentheses are open. I'm just fascinated by the relationship between a bridge and parentheses, one thing that connects things and something that closes things up a little bit. Can you talk about that? Well, that part was the bridge of Adrina, which was the bridge that connected Bosnia to, uh, connected the Christian and the Muslim worlds, the Ottoman Empire and, and Serbia. And it was constantly a point of, uh, of contention between between these places, and but nobody succeeded in blowing it up until uh, the Serbs did in the last Yugoslav conflict. And so the parentheses were not closed because after blowing up the bridge, a lot more bad things happened, and the parentheses are not closed to the horrors of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st, that they're still open for further horrors. Indeed. All right. Anything you want to say to our audiences uh, who will be seeing this online? Oh, no, I hate the audiences. Does anyone have one? Oh, you're not, you're not really an audience. <laughs> does, does anyone have one question for any one of the poets? Andre, yeah, I got one right. Okay. What is poetry? You were talking about it in the car. That's a tough one. Well, you know, I thought about 25 years, something that is, uh, was called poetry by the people who were selling it, but I always thought of it as kind um, of a training in um, sedition. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's a very interesting, it, but without recourse, right? I mean, because, you know. Oh, yeah, I mean, you go that way and then you, you, you can't turn around at all once you're halfway past the middle of the river. You go either I keep swimming or I turn around. You're going to drown either way. <laughs> the floor of hell is shimmering. <laughs> well, thank you very much all for coming. <laughs> thank you.